Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. And today we are joined by a guest. Say your Hello. name. Hello! Potato, potato, awesome. tomato, tomato. It is awesome to be here, dude. Awesome. Love your channel. Love your work. Thank Love you. Love your videos. Thank you. What's your favorite video of mine? Probably just the modulus one. I freaking watched that recently. I loved it. I watched you, that yesterday. You actually liked my, my stupid was... modulus video. It wasn't stupid, dude. It was good. I... I don't do videos like that. More people should. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you liked that. I had a lot of fun making that, even though it took the whole day. Because I had to research a lot of stuff to get that to work. Oh. Uh, oh, my. Yeah. Um, but I completely forgot how to play this game. So let's see how, let's see how chaotic this goes. But, uh, basically, yeah, so, um... How's your day been today? I've been doing good, just, you know, messing around with some blasters, messing around with some stuff. Good. I uh, heard that you finally got your Straven finished, eh? Yes, uh, there will be a video on that way in the future. Um, way in the future. I have a lot of future. testing. It's going to be a few months before I can actually go and do it. Um, ah, gotcha. But I have a lot of testing to do and a lot of uh, games I'm going to be able to run it at. And uh, I'm excited to see what I can put it through. I can't wait to see it. So uh, that should be pretty interesting in the future. So let's get right into it. Um, right into it. I guess I want to kind of go back and look at the, the past three or two to three years for nerf because yeah they've they've been interesting that's that's <sighs> for sure <laughs> that's, de that's definitely uh the case um so let's go to 2020 oh god and, uh, yeah start from there yeah uh 2020 was I want to say that's when they launched Elite 2.0. It was when they launched Elite 2.0, and it was an absolute catastrophe. Yeah, it it really was, dude, and it's huh? it's it's painful because it's depressing. They had a lot of things going for it. They did, and like, that's probably what why Modulus was killed off to put yeah. Elite 2.0 into play. Because like I. I absolutely like the idea is there uh, there's no problems with the idea of elite 2.0 it's just the the atrocious execution that's a nice way of saying it yeah and because it's like i i'm all down for putting modulus into elite that like I, in my opinion yeah. that's a great idea because the whole the the modulus vibe of uh, attaching blasters to to each other and just like adding way too many attachments for no reason sign me up I like that and with the quality of elite blasters I mean they had it going when they released the modulus demolisher long strike and strife they're very clearly like here you go here are blasters that everybody loves and put together as dedicated modulus blaster it, it, it's a great idea you gotta admit um yeah I think I, I have a I have my own theory. I feel like the reason it ended up being such a train wreck was because um, the the elephant in the room hit all of a sudden, and they were like ninety percent of the way through development, and they were like, "Oh God, how much is this going to impact us financially?" And so they just rush ordered a whole bunch of changes and didn't have enough time to flesh it out. And so that's like, that's why the Warden failed, that's why the Echo didn't have O-Rings, it was like, that's why the whole launch of Elite 2.0 was such a catastrophic disaster. 
because they didn't have the time to flesh out the series the way that it should have been done. I th I personally think they knew what they were doing. I do think that they intentionally cheaped out, and here's why. You have a lot of shareholders in the company, and the people who pay the big bucks get a little bit of a say in it, and if they're cheaping out on the plastic, and I, let me clarify this, I bought four wardens. All of them broke. Oh, the that's painful. I returned all of them. I had a whole video prepped for that, and I just couldn't do it because I was so angry about it. But on top of that, when you look at stuff like Elite 2.0, it's clipped and glued together. Yeah. My right to repair is being invalidated by you clipping and gluing a blaster shut to the point where if I open it, it's going to break and not be able to be put back together and not work properly. That is definitely true. Like, um... I don't know what's going on there. But I'm sure that they knew what they were doing. Uh, I don't know why they implemented those specific changes. It seemed like, at the time, it just seemed like they were upset that people did mods on blasters. And it was like, Alright, mate, you wanna put, I want to take your blaster apart? Here you go. We're going to make it hell for you for absolutely no reason. And then we're going to laugh about it. But... I don't know, it makes more sense that it was like, I don't know. It just seemed like they had the right idea going, and then they vindicated it. So, I'm going to assume due to lawyers that Hasbro can't acknowledge we exist, that we mod, we disassemble our blasters, paint them, you know, make them hit harder FPSs, new internals, new whatever. Yeah. Um, because they could get sued for some stupid reason or whatever but they to intentionally like even if you don't mod my right to repair is being invalidated yeah. I have the right to repair a product that I paid my money for because that is now no longer their product it is now my property and I have the right to repair it yeah. it's like how cell phones if your phone breaks you can open it up to fix it they exactly. can tell you you can't do that so they knew what they were doing um, and the point was to have in my opinion was for the blasters to break so you had to go buy another one that definitely is like that's a big thing that I've heard about this is that they did this on purpose so that they would eventually fail and then you would have to oh my gosh you would have to go in uh, and buy a new blaster which might have been which might have been like the original intention but we don't really have a way of verifying that cuz i mean if somebody were to go and ask them about it i mean of course they're going to say no why would we do that well, yeah they have to deny it because then that would be a, a valid reason to sue them if they knew that they were going to fail yeah you were intentionally putting out a faulty product and you're probably breaking some sort of law there or some sort of right um, and then you have stuff like, you know, transitioning a little bit later into the year, Nerf Ultra came out. Well, actually, um, Nerf Ultra came out in 2019. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I'm... It was just, well, like, it was released super duper late into the year, like, really close to, really close to the end of the year, so a lot of people started seeing Ultra in 2020. Alright, so then let's go back to 19, looking at Nerf Ultra. Uh, that was a complete disaster, and I like I I don't understand. I I really don't I don't understand because it's like it was it could have been so cool. Like you have these these new types of blasters with an aerodynamic dart that is designed to be as efficient as possible to travel the furthest distance, to shoot in a straight line, and um. Uh, have have rival performance, bam, and but it doesn't do any of those things. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. They don't shoot straight, especially not at launch. I mean, here's the thing: Ultra Accu Strike shoots straight, but why did it take them a year and a half to make Ultra Accu Strike? The Dart design is literally the exact same thing that is on Mega Accu Strike. They had the resources there. 
they just do. They don't care. They don't. And I mean, we can't even get access to normal AccuStrike blasters or darts anymore. No, they pretty much made those inaccessible, except for the Alpha Trooper one. You can still get the Alpha Trooper one. That's true. Yeah, it's just hard to find. The Alpha Trooper one is difficult to find. But there's no reason for... <clears throat> there's no reason for them to sit there and be like, okay, um, proprietary ammo, proprietary magazine, um... And then on top of the proprietary magazine, they made another blaster later on that took a different proprietary magazine that still <laughs> took all the dark. They made two different types of magazines, and it hurts. And what are you doing? They should have made the the speed magazines the ultra magazine when they first started doing ultra magazines because. I love the rival magazines because you can just stamp them down and pick up r rival rounds whenever you see them. The Ultra Speed magazine is exactly the same, but for Ultra Darts. If they had done that for all the Ultra Blasters, made them all work the same way as the Speed, then they could have had an actual, like, possibly functional ammo type. And if the ecosystem wasn't so expensive, then more people would be willing to buy them. I, yeah. And so it's I like... Mean, they, they know. <laughs> they had it's all the cards laid out on the table for them. They had the cards laid out for them. It was like... It could not have physically been easier to find a way to do that. Uh, they, they found a way to make it stupid. <laughs> they found a way. They were like, oh, but what if we do this first and then try and do it that... No. No. You're stupid. <laughs> Whoever was behind that decision was stupid. Oh, uh, my God. And you but know like, what the best part is? You know what the best part of all this is? It doesn't really have to oh, deal boy. with this. But my speed is broken. My ultra speed is broken. Oh, my God. I did a video talking about it. It was like one of my first videos. And I talked about the fact that... That it was a rather competent blaster. Not anymore, because it's broken. <laughs> and it comes down to, like, the magazines, they don't hold much. I mean, even if they were 15-round mags, I'd be a little bit more happier than just a 10 or a yeah. 12. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, we've... So, even in the modification community, I talked to a, uh, a friend from my Nerf... Uh, my little Nerf squad slash group. Uh, from the outcast, and I was like, we've, as modders, we've laid cards down in front of them. We've yeah. We've laid you groundwork for stuff like uh, the Straven to be injection molded, hitting 70 FPS. You could have done that, but you said, no, screw you guys and your ideas. We don't want to take your ideas, because we don't want to be sued. No one is going to freaking put a patent on anything with Nerf's logo on it, because they could get sued by Nerf. Yeah. Because you're trying to patent their own invention. Like, I you, mean, gotta, you gotta admit, but Nerf has really dropped the ball recently with just... So many of their things are just so useless. Because, I mean, the, the ideas are there. They're there. You've got it. they got the idea. Like that thing that they showed off at Nerf Ball. That is a modified strife. They know that they can modify their blasters. Like, that's basically them acknowledging that we exist. Um, and for some reason, for some reason, they have not taken the opportunity. I just realized that these trains are too wide, and now I'm sad. But it's, it, like, and I've said this before. They know we exist. We've weighed the ground, the Straven, stuff like the Poonbow. I'll, you know what? I'll show you. I'll show you. Well, you can't... I'll send you a photo to... You no, can't no, show I'll send you a photo later. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'll send you a photo later to put in it, but... And you'll cut this part out, hopefully. <laughs> this. This is simple. That is, is a, something we've that is an 18 at. Dart magazine, for those of you watching. 18 Dart Clear magazine. Yes, it's been painted clear. Why can't you just simply make these again? We would buy these separately. I know. Instead, this is a Chinese ripoff 
that I get four of these for 20 bucks instead of... Uh... It's... We would pay for these. Sell them separate. The 50 round drum mags. We would buy those, but you don't. And you're letting money sit there on the fucking table that you don't want to pick up because you don't want to do it. They have no reason whatsoever not to put these back into production. Because this is clear plastic and it's pretty cheap to make. The springs in there are pretty cheap to get. This doesn't even have the stupid little piece of plastic that you don't even need right there. This yeah, the, the bumpers. That's more money off of the it. Nub thing. So it's not hard. It's not. It's like they they have. It's like it's like people are basically giving them the ideas and they're just pretending not to look. It's the same thing with Minecraft's 1.19.1 update. Nobody wants that, but they still did it for no reason. Let's see if this stupid roller coaster works. I'm trying to do Steel Hog from Indiana Beach. But, um... but yeah, they know what they're doing, and I feel like, like we said, we've asked for stuff like this. When we wanted the Raven to come back and the Strife to come back, they listened because they know people bought the crap out of them. People bought Rapid Strikes, not even for a Rapid Strike, for a mag. A lot of us use these for HVZ magazines because of the capacity and because we can see through them. Well, not just really that, but they're like, like, okay, cool. They're a good size. They're small and compact, and they still hold a good capacity. Yes. And, you know, I mean, <sighs> then you get into, like, the plastic leaf springs and mag releases, for example, on the turbine. Yeah. And the, uh, frick, what's it called? Um, the, the Echo. The Echo. Oh, yeah, the Echo. And then you have, like, the Icon Series Lawn Shot. Oh! Down the plunger God. tube. I have one, and I didn't know about that until after I bought it. I, I just... hate the Icon Lawn Shot. That is, like I, like, I have one that I used exclusively for parts because of how bad it is. You want to know what I did? I went to I went to the thrift store, and somebody left their Zombie Strike Long Shot there, I prefer my Cashy's long shot to the brand new one that I bought at Target last year. And yeah. I I think that's like the saddest part about this hobby nowadays is you will get better things from the thrift store. The like the 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 lowest tier nuggets from the thrift store than you can a brand new package straight from Hasbro that was released now. There is not nearly the same level of quality as there was back in the day. And it, it, it's painful because it sucks. like when it comes down to it. Like, yeah. I'm I'm not happy about the decisions they make, but I freaking love Hasbro and I love the things that they've made. And I really wish they'd go back to the roots. Because yeah. Because a breach too. of a creator of Nerf is rolling around in their grave right now about what's going on. Well, I don't know if they're dead. That's a different conversation. Pretty sure they are. Are they? Let me actually go check. Um, Google it. I'm pretty sure they are. Nerf creator. Who's that? Lonnie Johnson. He's still alive. <laughs> Cut that part out, please. Wait. Um... Yeah, he's 73 years old. He's still alive. <laughs> Can he become owner of the company again, please? I don't know. He created the Super Soaker. I don't... I, I feel like if he came back, you'd be like, Oh my god! What have you done with my company? <laughs> we made it better. No, you didn't. You made it worse. You made it so much worse. No, we made it better. Well, actually, I mean, you... You gotta admit, what would you rather have? What would you rather have if, it, let's say you could take a Elite 2.0 apart, would you rather use Elite guns or Elite 2.0? If you could disassemble them, if they were basically exact carbon copy versions of Elite blasters, with different appearances, what shells do you prefer? So, like, when it comes to, like, the Raven, I prefer a Raven, because the Muggle Blitz is just ugly, and 
dumb. If I want to put an air gun on it, I attach an air gun to it or air blaster to it. Um, Don't do this to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like the photo plans. <laughs> what? I didn't say you couldn't like it. I'm just saying I prefer I prefer the Raven. Yeah, the opinions Raven. are valid. Opinions are valid. No, they um, aren't. Your opinion is invalid. You're not allowed to have a different opinion. <laughs> when it comes to like the strife, um, easily would pick over pick the strife because like everyone is so bothered by its being not being symmetrical. I don't care. Well, that's just because I have OCD, and it makes me nervous. Uh, <laughs> I could care less if it's symmetrical or not. Um, it wouldn't really bother me. Uh, um, when it comes to stuff like the rapid strike, I prefer a rapid strike because I like the form factor of it more. It feels more like a carbine, and uh, I like that. Yeah. Um, when it comes to, like, pistols... Hammer shot all the way. Yeah. You know. Um, granted, I don't run sidearms terribly often. I mean, I run one. I just don't use it as often. But, you know, those are like the main ones. Um, those are like the main blasters that mean the most to me. Especially the Rapid Strike, the Strife, and the Raven. Those yeah. Two, the hammer shot, you can still get, but the... The Raven, certain Ravens are stupid expensive. Um, oh yeah, like like for example, the Raven Fire is very very pricey. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes, it's ridiculous. Pricey um, son of a bitch. But it's like I just want the Rapid Strike back for these. Actually, these are the magazine. Off, yeah. Uh, <laughs> these are a knockoff Omni uh, Omni Queer, I believe is what it's called, and these are. Essentially the same quality. I mean, you can... Like, I'm legitimately trying to... Like, they they do well. And you I can't dropped, break... Like, yeah. No, I've broken them open, actually. Oh, and wow. Because I, I, I dropped them on concrete. The follower got stuck. The sprint was all messed up. I put it back together, fixed the sprint in the follower, and it works like brand new. Wow. <laughs> no issues at all. Meanwhile, you physically have to break a warden to open it at all. But that's that's like that's a that's another conversation. I think we've complained about the warden enough. Everybody yes. knows how bad it is. Now we haven't complained about it enough. Why did they do it? <laughs> Why did they do this? Oh no! I huh? don't know. I have no idea why. Now what? I was astonished when I when I had mine and it still works. Yeah. This is like they're doing something. They did something to make it work. <laughs> and maybe I got unlucky all four times, but no, that's not unlucky. No I got... Well, yeah, because there's no way I got a lemon four times in a row. I'm I'm calling bull. Oh my gosh. Um, I have like audio of the video, and it was just me swearing for like 15 minutes straight about it. Oh my gosh. I, um, I am so sorry. Don't be sorry, dude. It was kind of funny. I didn't post it because it would have gotten me. <laughs> uh, it just was way too much. Like, I try to keep my swearing down as much as I can, but... I feel like... Oh, it, my God. You, like, you open it, you're like, All right, I just got my fourth... God! Boop, 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 boop! Oh, yeah. Stupid boop! I think there's a total of like a hundred and something sensors on there. <laughs> like a hundred and thirty-four. I want to see this video now. <laughs> <laughs> and that, like, I tried cutting down the video, um, because I think even at the sub count I'm at, YouTube would probably be like, "Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> no." I didn't. I didn't check. I didn't even try to post it because I was like. Yeah, this probably won't end well if I was to do this. Let's just yeah. Not do that. Just, just no. Just, just, just give up. <laughs> so let's see. Actually, you want to check right now? Oh my bad. It was two hundred and thirty. Two hundred and thirty what? Sensors. Oh. <laughs> two hundred. I was. 
livid, and then I think I broke it on camera. Oh my god. Uh, it was- all of them were on the first prime too, though. You know what? They were all on the first prime. The first pr You primed it once, and it snapped?! I wasn't even able to pull the trigger before they snapped. That's went, like this- that's like an I SML went, I, episode. I don't know if you watch SML, but it's like... It's like puppet videos, I, but us, no, there was one it. video- Yeah, one video where their character Jeffy is like trying to blow up a balloon, and you can oh, hear him in the background popping the balloon, it's like- <laughs> Alright, that failed. Here, just be careful. Okay. <laughs> no! He gets another exactly. one. Just be careful, okay? <laughs> Damn it! He comes back. What's your excuse now, genius? <laughs> Dude, it was just, One it pump was and it blows up. What's your excuse now, genius? And it like I think I got so like I got to if this was the front right here, I got to probably about here. Ugh. That's not even halfway. And when did you get these wardens? So. When the warden first released, I was really excited because I kind of wanted to cut one up and use it as an undermounted shotgun for some kind of barrel attachment. I didn't have everything worked out at the time, but I was like, I might as well do a review on it. Imagine so, imagine I, taking that, what you just said, out of context. When this first came out, I was super excited about it because I wanted to cut it up. I was! I love the rough cut, guys. Don't hate on me. I love the rough cut, too. It's just not my favorite blaster because I broke two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I broke four wardens, so I mean, uh, it's we're opposites. <laughs> so I bought two when they first released. So one of them broke, and I was like, okay. So the first time I was like, okay, it's probably just a lemon. Maybe I did something wrong. Grab the second one, open the second one. I'm like, okay, let's try this again. Maybe I just got a bad <coughs> match. So I waited. I waited a couple months. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Um, bless you. Thanks. Um, so I waited a couple months, and then a couple months turned into like a, a year. while. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it turned into like a year plus. So then I went back, and I think I ordered these two online, or one online, and then one in the store. I got I don't remember. Um, and I, I'm like, okay, maybe maybe this still work now finally, because I was like I was ready to, you know, do a. a barrel mount shotgun. I was like, that's... I want to do that. And I go... I open it... First prime... <sighs> the gearbox snapped. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm like, okay, okay. Hey, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. So I, I grab the other one. Just, you imagine if you get... Uh, getting a nerf blaster, it breaks on the first prime, and you have to question if it's just you, because they break so <laughs> frequently. Because I didn't want to believe that. I didn't. So I'm like, okay, maybe I maybe I'm being a little bit too hard on it. So I grabbed the other one. I was as gentle as I possibly could be, I believe. And and then that's kind of when I you know That's when you lost your mind. No, I my my overreacted just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Sure. What did you do to it? Yeah, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. I burnt them. You burnt them? Yeah. <laughs> That's a I new was one. Done with it. I was done. I was so done with it. I, I mean, I can't really blame you because it's like, that's an awful experience. It was just hot garbage, and it's like you get to the point where you're like, okay, you just this give is where you have to. Well, yeah. At that point, I was like, it's not even worth me doing any kind of video on. Just toss it. It's done. I'm done, and I'm sick of it. Um, and, you know, I approached a bunch of friends in my little nerf group that I have, um, and I'm like, any of you guys have any issues with yours? And they're like, no, besides it just being a piece of crap. And I'm like, what do you mean? And like, it broke after, like, a hundred shots. I'm like, at least you got to shoot yours. <laughs> at least you got, like, a few shots in. For anyone who doesn't know why videos take so long on my channel, it's because I do a very, very long testing procedure. So do I. I, I shoot about. 
How many darts do you shoot through a blaster before you review it? I basically, I don't really do a testing, like, I don't do it like that. I have this kind of obstacle course thing set up outside that tests the, the durability of the blaster and how good it's going to run out in a field. And so I pretty much just run all over the yard with it, throw it around, shoot a lot of darts, stress test the crap out of it for like three days at least. And then, I mean, by the time I'm done doing that, I'm so exhausted that I just want to sit down. Surely grab my, uh... My, uh, because this was the last one. Well, actually, this isn't the last one I reviewed, but it's the one that is, you know, out and has a video on it. Yeah. Um, this was Project Patriot, and I think I ran... Project Patriot. I mean, we can't see it, so... Oh, yeah. I'm showing you it, but, you know, I'll send you photos for us. Crap, but... Um, I, I don't mean, know if I can even edit videos on this uh, on this platform because I'm using my computer and there's no video editing software for this anymore. They got rid of Windows Movie Maker and I literally can't buy any other video editors because I don't have any money. Just use CapCut. CapCut is pretty good. Uh, I will try that. I will try it. That's what I recommend. That's what I use. Um, I ran about 4,000 darts through this. Yeah. I, uh... I've done, I, I usually do about 500 to 1,000, and then I'm like, okay, that's good. It runs hard. You were having um, too much fun with this one, though. I think I shot it for, like, three hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. And then I, uh, I finally figured out how to, you know, finger bend the trigger and everything, and the, the trigger pull on this is so smooth, and... Now, I do want to segue into something, though, of a, a complaint, and something that I think maybe could qualify as a lawsuit for Nerf. Uh, mm -hmm. You know the Nerf speed? Oh, yeah, the ultra speed, yeah. Yeah. Look at the rev trigger on that. You want to know what that is? Yeah. That's a Bobaloa-style rev trigger, which was invented and made by uh, whatever the frick his name is. I don't know how to pronounce it. Words are hard. Um... This was made before Nerf had their Nerf speed trigger. Rev trigger. Oh, wow. And if you look at the design, the only thing different <sighs> about it is that the one on the speed is smaller. Wow. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I am not kidding you. If you were to go look at your speed, you would see. Oh, Hasbro. No. Well, actually, I'm shocked no one has talked I don't about have a speed. that. I don't have a speed. Well, oh, I'm shocked no one has talked about that because I'm like, that kind of looks like my rev trigger on my Strife. I'm like, I, I don't think shrinking it down or making it smaller. I, I mean, the design is still there, and I don't know if it's patent uh, has a patent on it or not. But if there was a patent on it, you could probably sue Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Very, I don't think there is a patent on it because it's a 3D printed part. I don't know. So you got to take this with a grain of salt. But I'm just saying is that the, the comparison to that trigger. That it's just it's so eerily similar. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, um, yeah. yeah. And then uh, another thing to note is this is a modulus strife. Now, Ah, it is. Funny thing about that is, when my Straven was built, I had a 3D printed, like, angled foregrip, and I'll send you photos of these so that way you can see what I mean. Yeah. But, um, this was a orange strife that was used in this Straven. Yeah. If you look here, where this tack rail is, they have that little indent for the, uh, instrike attachment. Yeah. That's able to be pushed down, that's able to be moved. If you look at the one here, there's no way you're pushing that down because there's no spring on it. Oh, yeah. Which I found extremely interesting. Figured that out because I'm, I figured that out because when I put my 3D print angle foregrip on, it was like really easily coming off. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Did I break it? Did, I, did the thing not click on right? Yeah. No, it clicked on right. It's just, it's so easy for it to slide off. 
On this oh thing, goodness. it's like it's freaking built into it. It is so much better to have this part on here. And I'm debating about swapping that out, but I'm lazy and I don't want to do that, so I don't care. Yeah, here's a question though. What do you think of that Elite 2.0 Strife reskin thing that they're doing this year? I think it's called the Storm Charge. Um, I've seen photos of it. I'm just... Skeptical? I'm not skeptical about it. I just, I don't like it. I, I, cool. You made another semi-automatic blaster. Would have been better if it was full auto, by the way. Um, because it looks like it should be full auto, in my opinion. Yeah. But, they just, I, I can't back Elite 2.0. I can't back anything in there. I don't blame okay. you. You know, and until they either publicly admit that, hey, we screwed up, we purposely <laughs> made this to fail, or we purposely used cheaper material. Don't even, you know what, Hasbro, I'm totally fine if you don't even say you made it to fail. Just say you used cheaper materials, because we know you did. We know you did it. It's like, they, can't, they, they can't hide forever and say, no, we didn't. <laughs> WHY WOULD WE DO THAT?! To save money and make more money off of us? No, Not in a million years! We're- we're good big corporation. Like, like, big, 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 big corporation bad. Uh, oh my god, I can't grab this piece. Until they publicly say a statement like that, I will not be directly buying any products from them. I will either go through other people, like if you wanted to sell me a blaster that was made by Nerf, I would gladly buy it off you. I would not buy it off Nerf, because they don't deserve my money. They do not deserve, because the way it works is you vote with your money. If you go and buy a bunch of Nerf blasters, like Elite 2.0 stuff, you're saying, hey, I like this, I'm buying this, I want to spend my money on this kind of thing. And it, it, your mo every dollar is a vote, and if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, not trying to get into like economic kind of thing. It's just it's just the way it is. So if they see okay, if the Elite 2.0 Warden did really well, so clearly people like this kind of stuff, and it's really cheap for us to make. Let's stop making modulus, or let's stop making. Um, let's start using cheaper materials, or you know, gluing stuff shut because people don't care. It, yada yada yada. Yeah. And they're gonna keep doing that. Um. And that's just the reality of it. It's a sad reality, um, and I, I pray to God that they will take responsibility for their actions, but they're probably not going to, if we're being honest. They, they just don't care. So. I mean, maybe they will. I don't know. I don't know why this thing is, is complaining, but... I, I have a little bit of hope. Um, and I, I think another thing we should talk about is like the gel fire stuff real quick here. Oh, I'm not gonna go too deep into yeah. it. okay. It's time to complain. <laughs> it's time to complain. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> why has bro? Time. Why did you go? Like, you why you oh. enter this this new ecosystem that you don't that you you don't have any reason to be in? It's like showing up to a modified nerf war that you weren't invited to. And you just show up, and you came with a deploy. <laughs> That's all you came with. <laughs> I kind of like the deploy. Well, but it's not a war practical blaster, and everybody else is using, like, the thing that you're holding. That's Straven. I don't know what you're talking about. He's holding a Straven uh, off camera. And I'll just, I, I'll give defense to this real quick here. One, mm. the deploy... As a stock blaster is useless, yes. Yeah. But I've seen people take them apart, put strife internals in it, and just confuse the crap out of people. And it's epic when you see that, by the <laughs> way. Um, I actually want to see that. Not gonna lie. Oh, I, I will have to find a video for you. Um, when I see the Nerf gel fire stuff getting on topic of that, that's. They complain that they can't have blasters or stock blasters, hit over 100, but you can do 120, 112 with gel blasters? Not just 120 or 112, but gel blasters, like, the default 
for gel blasters is like over 200. Yeah, they're... So it's like, there is literally no excuse. There is no excuse at all. No, they, they won't ever have an excuse because you cannot sit there and tell me that, hey... Um, what the heck? <laughs> what is this autocomplete doing? <laughs> Elite standard is, you know, 70 FPS. It's like, no, you guys hit, just hit, hit 90, hit 80 or 85, 85 minimum. 100, 100 max, put a bunch of warnings on your blasters, put a bunch of warnings on your on your box. I don't care, but you can hit 100 FPS minimum for stock blasters, or average for stock blasters, I mean. Um, but they won't, because you have people like Dark Zone over here killing it, doing pretty well. They've had some hiccups in the past, um, but they just... They they know what they're doing and I know. feel like I have killed my chance to finish this roller coaster. And yeah, I know what you mean. I'm gonna do that. And then... I mean, you know, I think like my biggest gripe currently oh isn't gosh. just with Nerf. A lot of it has been with the mod community itself. Um, what do you mean? There have been, you know, so I think. We look back at like integrations and where we've come from that. I mean, even back in 2015, integrations were pretty live. Um, I wasn't in the hobby at the time, but I was friends with someone who was and pretty much did an integration pretty much every two weeks for the amount of time they've been in the hobby, which was like 10 years. Um, and she would cut up a blaster, no issues, just start making crap. And it was cool. But now we get into like the 3D printing stuff, and ever since then, not many people integrate anymore. And it's really sad, in my opinion. Um, yeah, because that was like one of the, that was like one of the funnest things to do. Especially because not very many people have access to a 3D printer. Like, that is a very expensive and complicated resource to get your hands on. Because even if you have a 3D printer, if you don't know how to use it properly, you, it's just going to fail and you're going to be frustrated with it. And you're not going to know why you're failing. No, but it's, and I've been lucky enough to know some friends, or people I consider friends, who have a printer and I'm are willing to let me pay them to print some stuff off for me, very simple prints and whatnot. Yeah, but not but everybody like, has that. Not everybody can do yeah. that. Yeah, and that's true. But and, I can look uh, at stuff like... Uh, go ahead. What is it called? Oh, sorry, I wasn't trying to work you. It's okay. When you look at stuff like... Uh, I think my favorite integration I've ever seen was the Poonbow. That was one of the coolest integrations I've ever seen. Oh, really yeah. Cool concept. One, because it pissed off people. And I like to piss people off. It's really fun. Yeah. Especially when you take a rare blaster and you chop it up and people are like, okay, that's cool. And I hate you for doing that, but it's freaking awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. And there are very few people I know who still integrate. Uh, Grim, uh, Grim Reaper 2458, for example. Amazing integration work. Uh, the same guy who built my Straven. And he's been doing this for a while, and he's kind of really good at it. And it's really awesome to see, see it being done, because I consider it to be an art. I like to see people refer back to the old days. and it's Because all it is is 3D printed stuff nowadays is it's like, here's a small compact blaster that's semi-automatic and shoots 130 feet per second. And people don't make cool it, things like that anymore. No, and it's like the Straven, for example. But it's like, the Straven's cool. I like it because it looks a certain way. It has a certain form factor when you hold it. You feel, it feels really good in the hands kind of a thing. Yeah. And, you know, you could technically do that with 3D printing, but, you know, actually you probably could get sued, but I don't know. Don't don't take my words on that. That's not legal advice, but um, 
in terms of 3D printing, it's like you're you are limited to stuff. And you know, I think it's cool to get you know 3D print triggers, 3D printed rev switches, and mag releases, and the the 3D printed kits um, for like stripes and everything. It's cool, and I I think they're awesome. But when do you say, okay, this is just kind of the same thing? Because if you look at stuff like the Lepis, which is a stupid fast firing micro machine. I think it's brushless, and you get it to shoot like 50 darts a second. Um, and then you look at stuff like the the Woozy and the the Pew Pew, and that's not to say that none of those are different from each other. They are very very, cool. very similar, and well, but speed and the 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 thing it does is very similar. The Pew Pew is probably one of the most advanced blasters I've seen, minus the FDL three and momentum, but it's like it's half dart. And they all have a stupid rate of fire. Here's the thing. That's here's the problem. It's like, yes, this is fun, but how much usage are you actually gonna get out of something like this when it, it, it it's basically like what I was telling you earlier before we filmed this, you're basically using one shot your whole magazine. And on top of everything that I've just said, this thing is a hundred dollars. This Lepus thing that I, I'm looking at now is a hundred dollars. There's a lot of things that you could get for a hundred dollars. And if you get this now, then you're gonna have to you're it's gonna be outdated the next time some <laughs> the next time somebody comes out with another one exactly the same. And I I don't know. I do want to state that this is not me poking at, like, 3D printed creators who make, like... I'm not poking at the person who made the Woozy or the Lepis or the Pew Pew. Those are all amazing things in our hobby, and I like them. And I think they're awesome. I'd yeah. love to have all of them. But I just miss the, the the integrations. I miss the people kind of going back to the roots of a hobby where we started. We started... A lot of us... I think we really started picking up, in my opinion, in... 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017 with the integrations, and I think that they're, they're just so cool, and the, the concept of them are there, and people have done some amazing integrations. Yeah. Coop and his Stravens and his Poonbell, those were awesome integrations. But it's like, I just, I kind of get sick of the 3D printed stuff. I mean, I don't own any 3D printed blasters because I just don't have a use for any of them. I can get something... Like, they just don't put a smile on my face like an integration. Like, I can't yeah, even afford any 3D printed blasters. And it's like, because you're so limited, it it's like, you either make something that everybody's going to like, or nobody's going to like, or if you're lucky, you get something that, like, 5% of people find a use for. But, like, another thing is, all the 3D printed blasters that I have seen either do one of two things they're either introducing a really cool gimmick like uh like a true shell fed lever action blaster that was 3d printed that's cool but you yeah. will never use that in a nerf war and that thing is ungodly expensive and or you're getting something that isn't really fun at all is just 100 percent practical like the like the lepis thing or the pew pew or the woozy like something that and and even then, it's it becomes gimmicky again because of how fast the rate of fire is. It's a proof of concept. The same thing as the Battle Scout camera. Do you really want to be another Battle Scout camera? <laughs> I think where I disagree with you on there is... is um, what? So people like gimmicks, and they also like gimmicky blasters. Some people want the... Uh, the Win, uh, Winchester is what it was called for a lever action uh, shell yeah. blaster. People want that because it's cool. They like the way it looks. They like the way they like the experience you get and the emotional response to it. And I don't blame them. If you want to go run that on Earth War, please be my guest. I'd love to see that. I think it's cool. Is it practical? No, but not everything has to be practical. Exactly. I don't want to put that in there. Yeah. Um, but also, I think it comes down to like. There have been some really, really neat advancements in the hobby, and I think my favorite one recently that I've seen is uh, Silly Butts with his slab, the Silly's uh, Silly Liver Action Blaster. 
I really like the concept of that. That is probably the first 3D printer blaster I've seen that I'm like, okay, that is really cool. I really want to get my hands on one of them. Just seeing the action move back and still being able to use magazines, I like that. I like the idea of that. I think that's probably going to over... Um, I'd rather have one of those over Showington's Winchester. Um, when it comes to price on 3D printed blasters, yeah, they're expensive. And I understand why, because one, you have misprints. You can have catastrophic malfunctions with your printer, which can cost hundreds of dollars. Oh, yeah. You can have so many issues and um, the hardware for them. And then, especially if you're like a one-man show and you're selling a 3D printed blaster, obviously you got to get some kind of profit out of it if you're putting all of your time into it. Um, and it comes down to a point of like, I have nothing against 3D printed blasters. They're cool, they're awesome. And I think I'd pick up a few of them, uh, like an FDL-3 if I could get uh, still get one. I'd love to get a PewPew, Pew. I'd love to get the Woozy. I would love to get um, the, uh, what is it called? Frick. Uh, the Lepus one day. And, like, would I use all these? No. Would I have a, um, would I use them all the time? I mean, no. Would I still use them? Yes. But it comes down to the point of like, these are people in our hobby who help innovate in terms of ideas. And these people do amazing work, and I think whoever does whatever, you know, you gotta give them credit. Um, credit is due where credit is due, you know. Yeah. Um, I personally yeah. think that the height of mods for blasters really comes down to when you combine integrations with 3D printed things, not one or the other. Let, like, think about this. Think about a Straven with 3D printed shell add-ons and a 3D printed casing that could clip on so that you could have, like, LEDs in there. Make it look like something, like, from from a movie or something, like, something you would want to use. Like, that's a, that's a potential idea, and the potential is there, and so few people actually take that idea. It's like, a lot of people treat it as... All or nothing, either something completely gimmicky or something completely practical. And a lot of people forget about the middle ground, which is, in my opinion, the best part of Nerf. When the gimmicks are combined with the practicality. I totally agree. I mean, you're you're hitting it right on the head. And I, I don't think I've ever really looked at it like that. I'm always like, you know, 3 print blasters are cool. Integrations need to come back. And I think to a degree, integrations are making a comeback. Yeah. To a degree. Um, and I think it comes down to, like, there are probably a lot more people who still integrate, just don't really post about it or make, any, make it people aware of it online. And, you know, that, that's a whole other topic. Um, and I think it just comes down to, like, do what you love. If you love printing blasters and doing 3D printing, do that. If you want to do both integrations and 3D printing, do that. If you want to do just integrations, do that. Because... If you have a passion for it, just do it. Go for yeah. it. I mean, and it's, you know, you never know when you're going to strike that one, that one, uh, one chord and you're going to be like, this is perfect. Well off. Like, like, and you, you can't, you just have to experiment until you, like you just said, you find that one combination and when it clicks, you're just like, this is perfect. This is the best thing that I have. And only you're going to be the one to say that about that particular blaster. Because it's it's yours. You made it. Yeah. And that perfect blaster is going to be different for everybody. Right? And why, in my eyes, a perfect blaster would be a, a fully automatic select fire thing like the regulator that, that had the... That had the the performance of the Dart Zone Pro Mark III and the rate of fire of the Hyper Fire and looked like like the actual prop that I have created from my story. That blaster would be the Golden Child perfect thing for me. Nothing would ever be able to top that Net Nerf could ever make. As what it's, internals would you want in it? One internal. Well, I, that's tough because. 
They're like real specific here. Well, that's tough because I'm not very good with internals, but um, ideally, uh, ideally, kind of the same thing that they use in the Dart Zone Pro Mark III. I don't know how they they did it where the pusher gets connected to the trigger on semi-auto and then connected to the rotating thing on full auto, but but something like that that could be electronically controlled. So, for me, I have my, <laughs> um, I have my blaster. I have my my dream blaster, uh, my Straven trick. So ever since I got in the hobby, and there's a whole story behind it. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I really don't think it's appropriate on your channel for it to be on there. Um, oh, that's okay. That's okay. Once, um, one story short is, old friend of mine been in the hobby ten plus years. Seven months ago, sadly. Uh, decided to take her life on story short and uh, her blasters were burnt down a lot of stuff was destroyed and she was running a full auto Straven um, and you always and wanted a Straven we, yeah and we were planning on building one together um, it was running a worker full auto kit a DRS cage, which is uh, Dr. Snicka's cage, if you don't know. Very old person who used to be in the hobby. Cages are really well designed. Like That's like the, the one of the best cages you can buy. Um, and they're so rare and so expensive. Um, and it was running 16 gauge wiring, 21 amp micro switch, and then it was uh, had LEDs on the barrel, on the mag, uh, mag wells, so the mag wells were lit up, um, and those three little lines on the, or three little dots on the Raven. Yeah. Um, now in this I have a Nyx cage, um, and you know, like, like I said, obviously I can't get everything that was, but this is like the closest I can get to it, and I think this is, in my opinion, the best way for me to honor you know, who she was as a person. And it honors not only that, but the craft that was done to it. I mean... I can definitely you know, respect that. I, I think sometimes a blaster doesn't just have to be about performance. Sometimes it's about, you know, another it's person about, or about... It's, it's about... A uh, in the end, it's about having fun. Yeah, and definitely. If you're not having fun, then why are you doing it in the first place? Exactly. And I think a lot of people... A lot of people forget that. that. They, they forget. Yeah, and it's, it, it's sad when people forget that stuff. I mean, now I get if you're a competitive nerfer and you do competitions, but still, you want to have fun with it. You don't want to be frustrated all the time. I'm going to tell you a quick story before this video ends. I used to know this guy. I don't even remember his name because it was a really long time ago. But... He was always obsessed with having the best blaster and being the best guy on the field. And he, he was like a professional modder. I mean, uh, like, he, he did integrations and stuff like that, but he didn't have a 3D printer. So he would do, like, ridiculous integrations. But he was always unsatisfied with, with, his, with the blasters that he made because he would find some flaw and have to start over again to try and make them better. And at some point, he ended up just hating the hobby altogether, and he didn't want to talk about it anymore because that constant obsession with trying to have the best gear and the best rig just drained him. And he yeah. didn't enjoy... He never got a chance to enjoy Nerf for being Nerf, for just being a toy brand where you take a you take a plastic gun and you shoot foam darts at targets or at your friends and just have a good time because he wanted to to be the best all the time but he didn't know how and he didn't have the resources to and he was so obsessed with it it just ruined the hobby for him and i feel like a lot of people have gotten to that point not just him and it saddens me because that's not what this is about I, I respect the point of, you know, especially if it's, like, your job. If you look at, like, Coop and Drac and, and Balcom, you know, they do that as their job. Yeah. But they still have fun with it, and they wouldn't make content that they didn't want to make because that wouldn't be fun to them. Exactly. I think if, 
anyone who's watching, you know, if you're in the hobby or not, or any hobby you're in, if you're not enjoying it, guys, then go back to your roots as, uh, go back to your roots and what got you into the hobby and just start having fun again. You know, yeah. It, that is really as simple as I can put it. Pretty much, um, yeah. And um, yeah, I think one of one other thing that he just like he could not stand was the fact that he didn't have a 3D printer because he knew that the best stuff came from the 3D prints. Well, not not exactly, not exactly. Uh, yeah, that's. I uh, think you could argue more complicated stuff can come from 3D printing, but not necessarily but better or the best. No, definitely not the best. And don't, I don't think anything you don't is have the to best. Have, you, don't have a have to, you don't have to have a perfect rig to have a good time. And that's pretty much all I have to say for this video. So, do you have yes. any comments that you would like to add before I turn this off? Uh, yeah, subscribe. <laughs> He's at 90. Get him to 100, guys, please. Get this man to 100. <laughs> He's at 90 subscribers. Get Am I actually at 90 subscribe. now? I want to check. I want to go you see. Are. You are at 90. You need Let to get to 100, though. I was at 88 this morning. Let me see. Um, uh, Click on the channel if it will ever load. Oh, my gosh. I'm at 91. Wow. Oh, okay. Nine more people, and then he'll do the one-chip challenge. I'm not going to do the one-chip challenge. <laughs> when I hit 100, I'm going to... No. I'm not going to say it on the channel. <laughs> But, <laughs> but I'm not going to say it on the channel until it happens. But yeah, subscribe to FaZe. He's a really cool guy. I'm going to link his channel Please. in the description. And, uh, Thank you. Subscribe if you're new. Like if you enjoyed. Comment down below. What is your favorite thing about this hobby? And uh, yeah, that's just pretty much all I have to say. Um, bye. Bye, uh, face. Did this uh, video uh, is stupid. I'm stupid. You're probably <laughs> stupid. No, I'm. Not. I'm just kidding. You're smart. You're smart. Okay, bye. <laughs>